it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce uh, Giovanna Joyce Mbizi. I knew Giovanna before she was Giovanna. <laughs> she was Joyce Mbizi. And playing piano for the, uh, the stellar cabaret trio of Nicholas Glover and Ray. Yeah. And uh, Joyce Giovanna was a dynamo at the keyboard, driving the tempo, NGW singing these tight harmonies. And for those of you who had the pleasure of seeing Nicholas Glover and Ray, you know that was one of the best shows around Absolutely. in any genre, not just cabaret trios. But then, um, you know, the reason Giovanna is here, one reason, her um, life was turned upside down with a cancer diagnosis some years ago. And her relationship, not only to life, but to music, because she's a fabulous musician, songwriter, performance artist, her relationship to music was radically changed. And she realized the degree to which music can be such a powerful healing force. And so she set up a nonprofit called Generate Possibility. Isn't that a great title? Generate Possibility. And uh, I think it's um, designed especially for uh, people with neuroendocrine cancer. Do I have that right, uh, Joe? One program. One program, yeah. And uh, then she also, since 2010, she's been running this program called Music Heals. And I haven't had, had, had a chance to uh, sit in on one of these programs, but I gather uh, these programs are held not only at cancer centers, but larger venues, mostly in the LA area. And as I was saying earlier, I mean, Giovanna really uh, uses her formidable musical skills, you know, in so many ways to serve the larger cancer community. So. We are the, uh, we are today, we are the beneficiaries of this amazing journey that Giovanna has been on for some time now. She will also be joined, I think, on her first piece by my beloved cousin, Sheila Glover, who herself is a uh, songwriter, uh, singer. She has uh, gigs with Stardust as a local band and plays, she also is a fantastic pianist, but plays a lot of other instruments as well, and uh, supports all kinds of progressive and humanitarian causes. And then Barbara Borden, who's also a close friend of Sheila's, they've cut a couple of CDs together. Uh, Barbara will be playing the drums, I think, on the second piece. One thing that Barbara does uh, is, um, bring groups of people uh, from all over the world in harmonious connection through drumming. And I like to say that Barbara is my favorite double Leo because wherever she shows up, wherever she shows up, the sun shines. <laughs> so uh, it's... Uh, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Giovanna Joyce now. It's really my great pleasure. And please join me in welcoming Giovanna Joyce and Beasy. Thank you, Toby. Oh, thank you so much, Toby. Um, I agree. You, you give such wonderful introductions. You gave my presentation. Um, that's, it's really special. I wanted to thank Michael and Toby for this invitation to be here today at Commonweal. It is such a magical place. And magic does happen in this room. Um, I was 
part of the Cancer Help Program in April of last year, and also had a connection to Commonweal before I even knew there was a Commonweal. Um, and two of the members of my soul sister group, we are group 194 are here today, and uh, just the program is so exceptional and what it does and creates bonds and opens up these conversations um, is, is exceptional. And the land, just being here, driving over the hill also brought to tears. Um, I feel like, Dawn, we're, we're sisters we haven't met, but um, you'll see the, there's so much of a bond in what I was going to talk about today and what you've spoken about. I was joking with the musician saying where we are on the agenda. Well, we're be between death and lunch. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> a good place to be. Or as someone said, the afterlife. Um, that was Barbara. Uh, so I'd like to share some of my personal journey with you as a connection to how music really became something as a source of healing and the power of healing from music, um, a sanctuary, really. And it didn't start out that way. Um, I've always been involved with music. When I was seven, I was forced to have piano lessons. Um, and I wound up going to music school in San Francisco. And uh, music was always a part of my life. I was so fortunate to be one of the ones who uh, could make a living doing it and did my entire life. Um, and it was great to do something that I loved and um, have that be my career and my profession. And then there was a profound shift. In 2005, when I was 47, I was diagnosed with neuroendocrine cancer, a rare cancer. And I heard those words, incurable, terminal, slow growing. It was a very mixed message, but it wasn't good. Um, and because neuroendocrine cancer is so often misdiagnosed, I was metastatic when I was diagnosed. So it was pretty extensive disease at that point. And I, Neuroendocrine cancer is also widely known as Steve Jobs cancer. It's the cancer that he passed from. Often people say that he died from pancreatic cancer, but it was pancreatic neuroendocrine cancer. And so I had a very extensive surgery, um, which involved the intestines mostly where my primary was, liver, gallbladder. Um, and my body really went into shock. I just did not have a very good recovery. And one of the things I did in the hospital when I was there for over two weeks was just put on my iPod and listen. It was an iPod then. Um, and listen. And it was the only solace that I could find with everything else that was going on and the doctors coming in. And, and as Don said, no one was asking me, what are your hopes and dreams? It was just, well, let's get another CT scan and, and such, so much medical jargon. So then I was recovering at home in March of 2006, still recovering. I'd been hospitalized multiple times for intestinal blockages. And I was watching television. And on PBS, the show came on called The New Medicine. And this woman came on the screen, and she just had a very brief cameo. And she started talking about her intestinal surgery at age 27. And this was Rachel Naomi Remen. And she talked about how a nurse had come into and, and had actually, the previous nurses were putting gloves on and wouldn't touch her. And this nurse came in without gloves. And she had bags, so they had to be changed. And the nurse changed the bags without gloves. And she actually touched her. And she said at first she thought, how unprofessional. <laughs> no gloves. But then she realized that the humanness of this nurse who was willing to touch her and be with her, and how that gave her hope. And it gave her the hope to know that no matter how bad this was, she was going to be able to get through it. And here I am sitting on the couch, hearing this in tears, 
she has intestines, I have intestines, she knows me. <laughs> she knows what I'm going through. And it was that moment that really made me think, I can do this, I can get through this. And I did wind up having a second surgery. Um, I Googled Rachel Remen right after that, and I found out she was giving a workshop in Mill Valley. And I thought, I have nothing on my schedule, so I can go to Mill Valley. I live in Los Angeles now, but I used to live here. And so a week later, I was in the workshop. And it was one of those rare workshops where she, uh, there are, they allow people who are not healthcare professionals, but many of the people there were healthcare professionals. And she had asked us to bring something that was small and meaningful. So I walked in and I, I saw someone with a stethoscope. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's meaningful. That's real healing. That's value, scientific, proven. And I became very intimidated by what I had brought, which was this gold necklace in the shape of a G-clef. Mm -hmm. And the G-clef and music had been my whole life but there was the stethoscope. <laughs> and I really wrestled with the value of music as healing, a healing tool. But under the guidance of Rachel Remen and the entire workshop group, um, I left there really with a profound change in understanding the power of music to heal. And I also left with a real sense of purpose, a change. And I think we, when faced with mortality, we really do have a sense of suddenly there's a time limit, which was previously unlimited or unknown, or we didn't really think about it. But now there's the other thing I learned from Rachel is there's a blessing within the illness. And that blessing for me was having a complete shift in what I had been doing my whole life and how I could use it to help other people. And when I was coming up here yesterday, I realized, if Wikipedia is correct, that it was Rachel's 80th birthday yesterday. And I just cried when I heard that because I remember in her talks that, in her books, as a young woman, she didn't get married. She thought, I won't have children because I'm not going to live. And then turning 80. And even in the PPS special at 68, after multiple surgeries. So I did have a second intestinal surgery in June of 2006. This was right after the workshop. And I really couldn't do much. But I could sit at the piano. And those months became my healing at the piano, just recording, composing, recording, and composing. And that wound up becoming a CD called Short Stories, which is music for healing, meditation, and relaxation. And with a cancer diagnosis, we often have this mental chatter that just does not stop. And it's something that the doctors can't address. It's the medication doesn't get to that place of fear and anxiety and loss and disappointment and how everything has changed. And the questions of what if and what if not and how long do I have? So the song that I wrote is called Hush, and we'd like to perform it for you now. And the song is about those voices and quieting those voices. And it was inspired by a nurse who also gave me hope and taught me how I could believe that these obstacles didn't have to be the end. So we'd like to perform that. I'd like to. I uh, have Sheila Glover join me on vocals. And as, as Toby said, I worked with Nicholas Glover and Ray for many, many years, 20 years maybe, off and on. And um, 
it's such a pleasure to be here with Sheila sharing this. So this first call, song is called Hush. And I'd like to dedicate this performance to Rachel and to everyone at Common Meal who makes this possible and makes it such a special place. Happy 80th birthday, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you so much, and thank you, Sheila. So as we're living longer, we are living more often with a diagnosis and with serious illness, um, whether it's cancer or uh, 
heart disease or Parkinson's or all three. Uh, and we're looking at patient care as whole person care. And I love what you said, Toby, of soul-centered medicine, uh, really taking into account the patient's life. Sometimes I feel like I'm so busy trying to uh, go through my medical care and th being anxious about cancer that I'm not living my life, <laughs> and, which doesn't make any sense. Um, and the power of integrative care. There's a wonderful documentary called Alive Inside, a story of music and memory. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, Dan Cohen, uh, who has a nonprofit, Music and Memory, worked with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's patients on people who had not moved and could not talk and could not walk. But when exposed to music from their past, from their childhood in particular, allowed them to speak again for the first time in years. And the results are remarkable. I love seeing the science in that, you know, that, that there really is a dramatic, measurable result. And neurologist uh, Oliver Sacks has one of my favorite quotes, music has more ability to activate every part of the brain than any other stimulus. He goes on to say, music can lift us out of depression or move us to tears. It's a remedy, a tonic, orange juice for the ear. <laughs> but for many of his neurological patients, he says music is even more. It provides access, even when medication cannot, to speech, to life, to movement. For them, music is not a luxury but a necessity. And one of the deep necessities I consider is joy. And what gives us joy? And a friend of mine, when he was diagnosed, um, he met his oncologist, but I think he also met a palliative care doctor who said, what are your hopes? And he said it was the first time anyone asked, what are your hopes? It was all, where are your scans? What are, what's your blood work? But what about your hopes? And it can be the smallest thing that brings us joy. I remember after surgery, just being able to sit up without pain was enough. Being able to eat. And then walking and feeling the wind through my hands after being indoors for so long. So joy is something we can experience even in the hospital bed. There are, there are moments that we can have that joy. And one of my favorite memories is a visit to Hawaii, Maui in particular, and the Hana Highway. Has anyone been on the Hana Highway? So you may remember it's a road with 61 one-lane bridges. It's treacherous, but it also has some of the best magnificent views on the planet. So I wrote a song called Hana Highway, named after that famous highway. And um, I'd like to play that for you now and invite Barbara Borden to join me on this.
most important things in, I think, life, healing, recovery, anything, is community. And one of the things I've learned from my illness, which has now been little more than 12 years, is how much I've learned from other patients. And through the nonprofit I founded, our group that supports neuroendocrine patients, I've talked with hundreds of patients and working with so many doctors and trying to get that conversation to really be more at ease. And what can we do to better that communication? But the community has been so important and all the resources. And you know when you, I met yet someone yesterday and said, well, yes, mine is this kind of cancer. And there's this immediate bond. And you know, driving up to Cedar Sinai, sometimes you'll see the, the Rolls Royces come up, and and you realize this is a common denominator. It doesn't matter. We all share this. So we'd like to do a last piece for you that is about community, and it actually involves you as the community. <laughs> and as Toby so nicely said, the uh, the Music Heals program is a time to bring together patients. And music can be any genre. Sometimes you just want to get up and dance, um, or dance from your wheelchair, or dance from your seat. And um, it's been extraordinary to have these events. And working with the cancer support organizations like the Cancer Support Community and partnering with them, and my favorite testimonial is one woman who said, I got to forget I had cancer for two hours. Mm -hmm. What a gift. Uh, and, and she was up. We had a blues singer-songwriter. And she was up and dancing and clapping. And the performers, with so many people who obviously are going through chemotherapy, it changes them as well. So. This is a piece we're going to improvise a little bit. And, a lot. Uh, a lot. <laughs> and, um, I've got a, but Barbara has a wonderful documentary called Keeper of the Beat, which I highly encourage you to check out. And her website is on your programs, I believe. Um, and so I'm going to defer to the guru of Keeper of the Beat. <laughs> well, I found that the beat's in your feet. We all have a beat as we walk down the street. Ain't that neat? And not only that, it raises the heat. So you don't need a drum. You can hum. You can also come and snap your fingers, too. Why not? That's cool. You're a very advanced group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I invite all those who want to, to stand up. And those who want to sit, please do, because you, too, can move your feet to the beat anywhere you are in bed, hanging from the chandelier. It's always clear that the beat's in your feet. Yeah. 
You can add an extra beat here and there. But don't do that yet, because we're going to clap like you're doing. And you are very advanced because you're clapping on the right two and four. You got the back beat. You've been listening to rock and roll. It makes you whole, doesn't it? Feel so good. And shake your body anywhere you need to. Loosen up and feel that beat in your feet. Yeah, yeah. Ain't that a treat? So now we're going to change our clap a bit. And clap when your feet are on the floor. So it'll go like this. Uh, uh. Now see how different that is? Yeah, that's a little square-er. <laughs> But it's called the downbeat. Musicians are very smart, you see, because when it goes down, it's called the downbeat. And then notice that your knee has to come up for your other foot to go down, and that's called the upbeat. Isn't that clever? All right, so we're going to change to the upbeat of our knees. Up, 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 yeah. Very advanced, very advanced indeed. Oh, wow. All right, you're happening now. So now that you have this going, let's go back to the feet. Got the feet alone. And we'll let, let's speed it up a little. So we're going to go a little faster, little faster, little faster. Here we are. Good. And now we'll do some call and response. So let's get right well i'm on my right but you may be on your left but it's it's all good just rock with the person next to you all right that's called entrainment by the way <laughs> and everything in life entrains whether you like it or not that's the way it is so let yourself go into it all right so i will play something in a matter of four beats and then i will direct you to play it back to me it's called call and response and there's no mistakes there may be some new takes that you find that don't match exactly, but enjoy them. Okay, here we go. So. And nice. That's a hard one. Woo! 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 Okay, and Sheila's gonna keep adding that voice, but you keep clapping and stomping. Sheila's gonna take you away now. Here we are at Common Wheel. We are at Common Wheel. Here we are at Common Wheel. Here we are at Common Wheel. Beautiful Bellinas. Beautiful Bellinas. Oh, beautiful Bellinas. Oh, beautiful Bellinas. Cows are in the fields. Cows are in the fields. The ocean's way out there. The ocean's way out there. Beautiful blue sky. Beautiful blue sky. Beautiful blue sky. Beautiful blue sky. Lovely, lovely smiles. Lovely, lovely smiles. Dancing, dancing bodies. Dancing, dancing bodies. Here we are at Common Wheel. Here we are at Common Wheel. Having fun. Having fun. We're having fun. We're having fun. And we're learning a lot. And we're learning a lot. And we're getting very smart. And we're getting very smart. And we're opening our hearts. And we're opening our hearts. And that's the best part. And that's the best part. Dum 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 oh. Dum 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 oh. We can start just doing a long
just uh, take a minute, close your eyes, and feel your body now. And the body that you are part of in this larger community. You are all divine musicians and music. You are the music and you are the beat. And you'll have a new experience as you walk down the street. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I believe there's two other people here who have neuroendocrine cancer, and it's um, it's so nice to see that there is more attention being given to a disease that um, a lot of doctors didn't even know to diagnose because it was so rare and it was something that they studied in school maybe for an afternoon. And originally it was called carcinoid, and oid means like cancer, so it wasn't even so many patients are just turned away and said, you know, it's not really cancer. And then we see them five, ten years later with really advanced disease. So, well, thank you so much. It was really amazing being here. Thank you.